welcome everybody. We're gonna get this party started. Just bear with me. Of course, I tried my virtual background last night and it worked fine, but today doesn't want to work. But we're gonna make it work anyway. Just bear with me. While Pam gets that together, you guys, we're going to continue to uh, let us know where you guys are calling in from. I see we got um, Miss Sue Haney. She said to give us the DR background, Pam. Give us the DR background. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Miss uh, Janice is calling in from New Jersey. Great morning, Miss Janice. Miss Janice, how you doing? How you doing? Let us know where you guys are calling in from as we get this all right all right she got it she got it y'all yes there go you on play there we go how you guys doing thank you thank you thank you appreciate you so top of the morning everybody um bear with me let me see make sure we are recording the call all right rock and roll um thank you guys again for joining tuning in like delisa mentioned to you guys i am in the beautiful island of the dominican republic and the virtual background absolutely does it no justice because I am truly in paradise, uh, surrounded by love. And I'm just super overwhelmed with gratitude this morning and just um, joy and love being able to just be here with my family. I'm um, thinking to everybody who's just reached out and sent love my way, greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. So um, if you are new to our call, welcome. If you've never got on one of our breakfast club calls, you are in for a treat. I'm super grateful um, just to be here with you guys. I'm super grateful to be able, give me one second. Um, I'm super grateful just to be able to have the opportunity to be present, right? Having the opportunity to, um, Zalisa, if you could please um, make me host so that my video can pin because I think they only see your picture really quick. So um, again, if you are just tuning in for the first time, um, we do these calls every Thursday morning at about 8 a.m. Eastern. And the reason we do this is because we strongly believe that garbage in is garbage out and greatness in is greatness out. And not only is it important for you to start your day with something positive because of the knowledge that you're going to learn, but really it just sets the tone for the entire day, right? It sets the tone for you to continue to be able to thrive in each and every aspect of your life. And um, if you were with us last week, um, we spoke about, you know, coming out of coming out of playbook and the playbook. And we did a quick recap uh, about everything going on. And if you are on all agents call on Tuesday, if you weren't, um, the recording is up. But um, right now, it's just a stage of execution, right? Right now, if you are part of our secret business um, and our community, you understand that right now, what we have our hands on is literally adding value to people's lives. And one thing that we want to talk about today is just strategy, right? Strategy, mindset, and what do the next 60 to 75 days look like for you um, up to the next event? And first off, we want to start talking about mindset, right? And, I, and if you know me, um, when it comes to performance, when it comes to anything and everything in life, your mindset is where your mind sits. And if something is not allowing you to grow, if something is not allowing you to prosper, if something is not allowing you to elevate in the areas of life most important, whether that is your faith, your family, your fortune, your fun, your fitness, do not let it sit there because our mindset is the most expensive piece of real estate, right? And I tell you this because the reality is that we have to do our best to make sure we're protecting our energy. So what are you listening to in the morning, right? What type of audios are you listening to? Who are you subscribing to? What are you plugging in, right? What are you disconnecting yourself from in this season? Because when we are going on a run, when we are going on you know, a journey, whatever it is, whether it's 60 days, 30 days, 75 days, 90 days, you want to prepare yourself, but you want to get your mind ready right? Stay ready. Don't got to get ready, but you want to get your mind ready. You want to prepare yourself for the rejection 
that you're going to experience, right? You want to prepare yourself for family and friends telling you no, for people laughing, right? For the temporary loss of social esteem at times so that you can permanently live your life how it is that you want. And our mindset is super important when we're going on a run and whatever the strategy is that you're going to utilize because really and truly it is going to not only set the tone for your run, but it is also what is going to give you the armor that you need. It is also what is going to give you the the drive that you need. And the more that you strengthen your mind, the more that you can see a vision, right? See, when you strengthen your mind, that means that you have a vision. And that vision is, it has to be big enough, right? That dream has to be big enough. Those goals have to be big enough. But that vision has to be a vision that is so compelling that it will pull you when motivation can no longer push you. Okay. And it is important for us to realize that not every day, right, you're going to feel like doing it. Not every day is it going to be a good thing for you to go through calls and go through the numbers and go showing people and not get necessarily the response that you want. But when you have your mindset on the goal, you are not worried about the price you are paying, but you're worried but more so you're focused on the prize and why having that your mindset ready when anything is because again garbage in is garbage out greatness in is greatness out but ultimately it's like how a man or a woman thinketh right so is she so is he so whatever you focus on the longest will always become the strongest whatever you focus on will expand so why do we want to get our mindset ready because we're going to go through obstacles. And it's not necessarily saying, oh my goodness, I gotta hope for, you know, prepare, you know, I gotta, I'm, I'm thinking negatively, right? Or I'm being a pessimist. No, on the contrary, you're saying, hey, you know what? I am preparing myself because I want to make sure that I am prepared for the worst, yet I am hoping for the best. So no matter what it is that you're doing, you realize that, ultimately you're in control not the decisions that other people make whether or not to follow you in your business whether or not to follow you in this opportunity but you want to have a clear mind because ultimately that mind is what's going to continue to give you strength it's what's going to continue to persist and persevere am i making sense to anybody here today right I know there's like birds chirping in the background and stuff. So just bear with me. But your mindset is so important. Let, let me ask you something, right? And let's just, again, we always are very transparent on our breakfast club cause y'all know we keep it real here, okay? Has anybody gone through any obstacles since you left Playbook? Any obstacles whatsoever? Whether that be an obstacle, have you got a no, right? Have you gotten, have you faced any adversity? whether that be in your business, whether that be in your family, whether that be in your faith, whether that be on the process, right? So exactly, so I'm not the only one, exactly. So why am I saying this to you? It's not for anybody to think negatively, it's number one, relax, right? <laughs> one of my daily affirmations, uh, thanks to my great sponsor, mentor, and fearless leader, Mr. Josh Valentine, is that, I am cool, calm, and collected. Yes, God, right? I am cool, calm, and collected. And why I say that to you is because I'm just transparent, right? But I have to remind myself that be kind to yourself, Pam, right? So be kind to yourself, Miss Janice. Be kind to yourself, Suheni. Be kind to yourself, Didi. Be kind to yourself, Diana. Be kind to yourself. So reset your mind okay reset your your energy reset your goals reset and it's okay for you to reset daily understand but what it's not okay is for you to give up permanently and you can reset daily and i'm never going to be the person that's going to be like oh you know what like never quit now you know, sometimes you just got to put the towel down Sometimes you gotta reset daily. Sometimes it's okay to give up in that moment when you're tired because again, your energy, it's what's going to attract people to you. 
So you're like, you know what? I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to reset. I'm going to listen to some audios. But it's not okay for you to give up permanently on your dreams, permanently on your goals, permanently on what it is that you want to do. Because the truth of the matter is, we're all going to face obstacles. We're all going to face adversity. We're all going to be in moments and in times where it doesn't feel good or, man, we wish we would have got that no sooner, right? But how do you persist and persevere in the process is having your mindset strengthened, is strengthening your spirit because our outer world is a reflection of what's going on in our inner world every single day. But I'll tell you one thing. The more you persist and persevere, the more that you continue to walk with in purpose, right? Your gifts will always make room for you. And where he has already declared that you are victorious, where he has already enlarged your territory, where he has already given you gifts, let me tell you, you already authorized to win in that personal domain. Nothing and no one can ever come against. So having that mindset ready, is absolutely of the essence, okay? So something else when we're getting into these goals and we're about to, you know, necessarily just go on this, whether it's a run that you're like, okay, I'm gonna do 30 days, 60 days, 75 days. You know, I had a teammate tell me the other day, Pam, I'm overwhelmed because I see everybody running for 90 days or doing a 60 day challenge and, a seven, and, and even when you're talking to me about, the next 60 days, she's like, I can't even think beyond this week because of the struggles that I am enduring, because the adversity that I am overcoming. And it resonated with me because I'm like, man, I told her, I was like, listen, I don't ever want you to feel that because I am moving at a certain speed or I am moving with a certain level of aggression, right? Or certainty that it's something you have to do. Be kind to yourself, but set the goals and set the pace that works for you. What may work for me may not work for you, but I just want you to look. I just want you to know what it looks like to be at this level. But regardless, this is your journey. So again, when you're focused on the prize, you're not focused on the price you're paying. You're not necessarily focused on the sacrifices that you are enduring, on the obstacles that you are overcoming because the truth of the matter is that there's going to be prizes along the way, right? There's going to be so many prizes in the process, but set the pace for yourself. So when you're talking about going on a 60 day run, 75 day run, somebody can correct me the exact amount of days that we have left to our next event, the ending of April, right? Which is Elevate. And all roads lead to Elevate. And I'll tell you, if you have not got your ticket, please do yourself the favor and do so. There, The last event was sold out. And this event will also be sold out. So make sure that you're setting the tone. Yes, somebody said we're 78 days. So what does this next 80-day run look like? What does this next 75-day run look like for you? Write it down. Right. And why I told you to write it out, because what you write in ink sinks. And one of my great mentors told me that no takers are history makers. Right. Um, but more than anything, it's like what you look at looks back at you. So what are you writing into existence? What are you preparing yourself to do in this season? So whether it's 60 days, 75 days, I'll tell you guys, I'm in the Dominican Republic. So I know my run is going to be a little bit over 60 days, right? Because the, since I left Playbook, right? I have been preparing for this trip. I am on here. But here's one thing I do know about Pamela Pacheco. When she turns it all the way on, ain't nobody messing with me, right? And I would have used another choice of words, but Ms. Janice probably will kill me. But ain't nobody, mess, ain't nobody touching me, right? Because that's how certain I am in me. That's how certain I am in my abilities because I know that greater is he in me than he who lives in this world. And there's nothing that I will not do that I will not prosper in. And I know, again, what I was talking to you guys in the beginning, your gifts will always make room for you. So in my mindset, I'm like, okay, I'm going on a 70 day run, right? When I get back home, that's exactly the amount of days that I will have 
to 70 days just be on it. Because yes, I have been on it every single day since Playbook, but I have not been as focused as I would want to be because I was preparing for my trip, right? Again, we're transparent here. However, I know what the next 70 days is going to look like for Pamela. So what does that 70 days look like for me? Okay, we're going on a diamond run. And here's why I'm saying I'm going on a diamond run. We're at the level of platinum right now. And I say we because I'm nothing without our team. We're at the level of platinum, but I always aim two levels higher. Why is that? Because my thing is, if I fail to reach for the moon, I at least landed on the stars, okay? You don't have to set that expectation for you, but I'm just sharing with you guys what it is that I am doing. So what does my strategy look like, right? So you set the goals. And when you write down what it is that you want, I'm gonna tell you guys, it's so amazing how it just, you magically attract it. Like when you're just working and you're hitting up people, then it's so funny because I was just telling Josh this the other day. I'm like, man, all of these people that I've been sending voice notes to, all of these people that I've been hitting up since Playbook is like magically now that I'm in the Dominican Republic, they're hitting me up. So what am I doing? I'm at least spending an hour a day while I'm here, right? doing my best to on our build for the crown session on our accountability group on our virtual cap fight. I'm still utilizing an hour out of the day to clear my inbox, to respond to those people's why, because I know preparation is key. See, one thing that I do know is that I need to be booked, busy and productive. And how do you stay booked, busy and productive while you're doing a run is making sure you're strategizing, right? But you're planning it out. What does this look like for you? So for the next 70 days, for me, I know that I have to at least hit up 40 to 50 people a day, right? And I know there's somebody on here that's like, Pam, I could barely hit up 10 people a day, girl. Like you talking about 40, 50 people a day. I don't know. Start where you can. Get in where you fit in. What works for you? Ask yourself these questions. What does my run look like? Not what my leader runs look like. Not what my upline wants me to do. Not what people would want you to know what does it look like for you here's what i will challenge you with though whatever it is <clears throat> excuse me absolutely awesome delisa said i just did this yesterday 10 per people i love that again the transparency is everything right 10 people per platform on on plus contacts i love that and here's why it is essential when you are setting what it is that you're going to do right in the next 60 78 days you want to give yourself what we call micro goals and micro goals are little things that you can do that impact your macro goal, your bigger goal. So what is a micro goal for me? Well, I know, right? Getting up early is something that I struggle with because I don't get enough sleep, right? So unless I am going to the gym every morning, like it's a struggle because I will be up to two, three in the morning because I have secret insomnia right? Ain't no boosters enough in the world that help, but Lord be with me. But I also know I have to work better on getting eight, nine hours of sleep because I'm the person that will be sleep at 3 a.m. Like I was last night. I was asleep by 3 a.m. and I was up at seven. Like, good morning, right? But again, not everybody is like that, but set the tone for you. Set what it is that you need to do to reset your mind. Set what it is that you need to do. What does that look like for you? So I know I got to get more sleep. So that's a little micro goal that I know I can accomplish, that I know that nobody else has control over but me. What's another micro goal that I'm doing? Hitting up 40 people a day. Now, if you can't say I'm going to hit up 40 people a day, here's what I do, right? I space it out. So sometimes I may be in a zone where I'm doing 15 to 20 voice notes or messages back to back. And, and here's what that message looks like really quick. Um, if you're brand new and you haven't heard what this looks like, um, this is what I do and whatever works for you, works for you and whatever your leader tells you to do. Awesome. I'm just here to share my perspective. Cool. Great. So here's what it looks like. Hey, hey, Didi. Oh my God. I know we haven't spoke since college. Girl, I'm working on something huge. I hope all is well with you, but I would love to catch up for you and run it by you. Uh, worst case scenario, we get to catch up. Let me know when you're free for 10 minutes in the next 24 to 48 hours, right? It's going to sound something like that it's going to say hey girl i know we haven't spoke since we last worked together man how are you i hope all is well with you but i'm hitting you up to see how you're doing but really and truly it's because i'm working on something big and i'll tell you one thing no matter how much caps letters you send okay people cannot feel your excitement through text but they can feel 
your energy, right? Through a voice note. And I love Facebook because even here, right? A lot of people don't have, don't have WhatsApp or don't have, you know, I can't send necessarily a voice note through iMessage, but I'm able to utilize Facebook, right? So utilize the social media platforms that you have. Don't just utilize your social media for social media, right? And I mean that because a lot of people, is it's utilizing it for necessary, not necessarily the right things in the right way, but if you utilize it to your advantage, it can be a very, very powerful tool. Am I making sense to anybody? So again, what does that invite look like for you? And when you get in a zone, right, it's the Pomodoro technique. You take, you take a dedicated time, 20 to 30 minutes and just knock it out one after the other, one after the other. So I break it down. Sometimes I'll do 15 in the morning. Sometimes I'll do 10. Sometimes I'll do 20 here, but here's what I know, right? You got to make it work what make what works for you, not for anybody else, not for you have to work, see what works for you. What can you commit to? Because when you are setting a goal and you commit to a number, you're not letting anybody down, but you, it's like you, we get paid in public here for what it is that we do in private. So knowing that every single time, it's like, okay, you're not playing anybody but yourself when you're committing to something that you know you're not gonna do, make sense? So give yourself that number, whatever that number looks like for you, whether it's 10, whether it's 20, whether it's 30, whether it's 40, whatever that looks like for you. And here's why my number is no less than 30 people a day. Because I know that again, my calendar has to be filled up has to be completely filled up, right? When I last went on a run and I put in 15 personals in 29 days, I'll tell you one thing, what it was that I was doing. I was locked in. I was locked in, but I knew that my calendar had to be full, right? It had to be full. So every day, my minimum showings was five. And let me tell you, there was days sometimes that I had seven appointments set up, right? And only three would show up. But you know what I would make sure using that time to hit more people up? to hit more people up and then the next day have more appointments, right? Because you want to fill up your calendar. So right now, what am I doing for when I get home? While I'm preparing, I am filling up my calendar. So the moment I touch foot back in Tampa, right? I forgot where I was going. The moment I get back in Tampa, my calendar is filled because the reality is, let me tell y'all something. You see all of these um, diamond agents, blue diamond agents, right? Ruby agents, crown royale. And here is the thing that I've noticed. They make a decision to go and get it done, right? They make a decision to go and get it done. But here's what I also noticed. They make sure that their calendars are filled and they have a sense of urgency, right? You have to have a sense of urgency. You have to take it serious. We are in a business that pays you weekly. A lot of people, sometimes it's like you're struggling financially. How can you be broke in a business that pays you weekly? So what that tells me is that you're not putting enough effort into this business, into this opportunity. But then when we show the business to somebody or we show the opportunity to somebody and we lead with vision and we're showing them our passion, we're like, man, why isn't that person getting it? Why, why are they not seeing where I'm going? Because are you doing what it is that you want? See, if everybody on your team did exactly what you did, where would you be? So we want to attract these great leaders. We want the next Jay Pastos, the next Jay Aons. We want the next Carrie Alicia Snyders, the next Eric Grzbowski, the next Josh and Kia Valenti. We want all of these great leaders. But are you doing every single day what is required of you to be a great leader, right? Because again, greatness in is greatness out, but set the expectation for what it is that you want. Write it all out and execute. So when you already got your mind ready, now you got your goal ready, right? You're strategizing. What does my day look like? What does my day look like? What does my daily activity have to look like? What hour am I going to take to make to do my Pomodoro technique? What hour am I going to take to make sure I have income producing activities? Okay, listen, I love all of our mentorship calls, our leadership calls, but understand these are not income producing activities. Okay, this is mentorship and leadership and coaching, right? 
blessed to be able to do this in our community. But again, you want to set time out for income producing activities. Remember, your mindset is always where your mind sits. What does that goal look like for you? Ask yourself that. What does the next 60 days, 75 days, 78 days, right? What does that look like for you? And here's what I always encourage people to do. Let's say you're only comfortable with reaching out to five, 10 people a day and being like, you like, Pam, you know what? I have a job. I have kids. I have businesses. I have life, girl. Like, I, I, I can't do all of that. I will tell you to challenge yourself at least 20%, just a little bit. Because one thing I do know, and I've realized in my 30 plus years of life and being an entrepreneur for over a decade is that nothing ever grows in your comfort zone. Nothing ever grows in our comfort zone. In fact, our life begins outside of our comfort zone. I always, one of my mentors used to always say, your comfort zone is the death zone. And, I, and it hit me because it's like, we have to get uncomfortable. You guys, it's uncomfortable for me to speak. And I know you're like, what? Yes, it's still uncomfortable. But I do it because I know I love to do it. I love to serve. I love to add value. But I also work on it every single opportunity that I get, right? I'm always listening to things, reading things, right? Expanding my mindset, surrounding myself with the thinking that outthinks me. Are you surrounding yourself with the thinking that is outthinking you, right? Are you stretching yourself? Because again, get a little uncomfortable. So if you're like, okay, you know what? I could only, I'm only going to commit to, to reaching out to 10 people a day. Why not try 12? Try 12, increase it by two, right? And then you'll see, but like, man, I got better. I, I, I was able to magically fit that in my schedule. Now I feel better, man. Now, instead of me having three confirmed appointments, I have four. Well, now, instead of me only exposing this opportunity to four people, now I, in, to two people getting started, now I have the possibility of getting four people started. And what do we know about what we do? This is a numbers game right? This is a numbers game. So making the numbers our friends every single time is always going to allow you to win on the big, big level. And when you're looking at this and you're like, okay, I got my mindset ready, right? I got my strategy ready. What does my goal setting looks like? You are very clear about where it is that you want to go. Now you have to execute. Now you have to execute whatever that looks like on a daily basis. And when you're executing, I will tell you this, make a decision. Make a decision, right? Make a decision because when you are in the field, you're going to get bruised. You're going to get injured sometimes. But when you make a decision, you kill off all other options. Understand? So what that means is that no matter what, all you're doing is focusing on the prize and never the price. And surrounding yourself with people that are holding you accountable, right? Surrounding yourself with people that are feeding and fueling your cup like these calls, right? Josh does his call every Tuesday, right? The Ojeda's do their calls Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, right? Team Ketchup does their Sunday call. We have all, all agents call on Tuesday. Like, what are you feeding yourself with? And who's holding you accountable? I personally, Martel also does this breakfast club call on Saturday, thank you. So yes, absolutely. What does that look like for you? Who's holding you accountable? Do you have an accountability partner? Do you have an accountability group? I'll tell you, I'm the person that's like, I don't necessarily need accountability, but I need accountability, right? And why I say that is because sometimes we're like, oh, I don't need another man or woman holding, telling me what to do. And I have such amazing friends that stretch me that I look at them and I'm like, wow, because they really don't need people to hold them accountable because their kids hold them accountable, like in real life, like your why is staring at you every single day in your eyes and you have the audacity not to keep going. I don't know what other fuel you need, but I have such a great examples of men and women that their why literally makes them cry, right? And their why is what keeps them going that they don't have, they don't need anybody to hold them accountable because their kids hold them accountable. Them being able to tell their kids yes whenever they want. Them being able to be their kids' heroes is what holds them accountable. But sometimes we need an accountability partner. Sometimes we need an accountability group, right? Every Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, we have our build for the crown session. That is a virtual 
background. And I will tell you, in the season where we had a team competition, right? The people that I was seeing that was putting in the most personal, the people that I was seeing that was leading, not only our team, that was leading the company were the people that were plugged into that call Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, that were plugged into our accountability call. And I'm just, I'm just saying, that's, that's the reality of what it is. But what is holding you accountable? Who is holding you accountable? What is stretching you? What are you doing to get closer to your goals each and every single day? day. So having that mindset, writing out your goals, writing out what your plan looks like, write, write down what that looks like 78 days from now, write down what that looks like on a weekly basis, write down what that looks like on a daily basis and executing, executing, right? Whatever it is that you want, making sure you have an accountability group or accountability partner or people that are strengthening you along this journey. And speaking of people that strengthen me along this journey, let me see if he is on here. Uh, change role to panelists. There we go. All right. So um, one of my favorite people in this whole wide world, and if you know, you know, um, is Mr. J-A-O-N. And I've had the honor and pleasure to do life with this gentleman, right? He, if you don't know his story, you're about to just hear a little bit about him, but formerly he was a counselor in New York City, um, dealt with kids that had mental issues as well, right? And he also was a promoter. And when I tell you he completely did an entire 180, it's absolutely out of this world, um, moved his entire family from Brooklyn, New York to sunny Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Literally, we're neighbors living like less than seven minutes from each other. But um, I have the honor when I was talking to you about men and women that they don't need people to hold them accountable because I see how their kids hold them accountable on a daily basis. He was one of the people that I was talking about, right? Um, he is definitely in a zone right now. He is in an energy, his excitement is truly contagious. And, you know, in true Pamela fashion, last minute I asked him to get on here. And of course, um, he definitely did. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, Mr. J-A-O-N. How you doing? What up, Pamelita? Como estas? I am better now, better now. So for those people that do not know you, tell them a little bit about you. What's going on, beautiful people? Uh, thank you for this amazing uh, breakfast call, man. Honestly speaking, I don't even know why I'm invited to speak here. But it's always, a, like I always say, man, it's a, it's a privilege. You know, I'm always feel blessed and honored, you know, when someone asks me to speak or if someone's even listening. Um, but a little bit about me. My name is Jay Awen. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Born and raised and now live in Tampa, sunny Florida, man. What a great difference. It's a change. See that sun is shining. But um, yeah, man, I used to be a counselor, a mental health counselor. But it's funny because I did a bunch of different things. You know, I tried a doorman. I did lifeguard, did taxi. I did everything that there was. I wasn't scared to make money, you know, because my situation growing up was a bad situation. So I wanted to use that to propel me to, you know, do great things. And I always said I would be successful. I didn't know what. So I was just trying everything and figuring everything out. But when I got into counseling, that's where I really found my passion, man. I found something that I enjoy. I didn't mind doing it for free. It was something that I loved. It came, it was setting me a dear to my heart. And I grew a connection with the people I was helping. And, you know, uh, unfortunately doing that, you know, you don't get paid too much money, you know, which you should be because it's just a blessing to be a blessing, you know, and um, unfortunately, so I had to get a second job and I was working doing promoting and marketing for restaurants and lounges and nightclubs on the weekends. I was making good money, man, but I just didn't have a good life. You know, my, my life was just, uh, all about working hard and paying bills. And, you know, I would just see my kids grow up through videos and, you know, text messages and my wife would tell me, hey, you know, the baby started walking today. Or, hey, the baby's talking today. So, you know, I was just like, man, I need change. I need something different, man. And I seen a good friend of mine uh, who was doing something different. You know, you guys know him as Blue Diamond J Peso. Uh, he was uh, looking like he was just living a better life than me. And that's what caught my attention was he was just doing something different. And the funny part is he tried to show me you know, the industry of network marketing. And I brushed them off for about 10 months. You know, I thought I didn't need it. You know, I was like, oh, I'm good. I make good money. You know, he's younger than me. You know, I was like, what can he teach me? But um, when I seen his lifestyle, that's really what caught my attention. And I was like, you know what? I need that. You know, I, I work too hard and I don't really have a good lifestyle. You know, I make good money, but, you know, I was overweight, high blood pressure, you know, uh, not high, but it was creeping up. 
you know, uh, sleep apnea, a lot of different issues was, you know, creeping up on me. And I said, I need to change. And I reached out to him and I seen the information and um, I was blown away. I got excited. I saw hope. I saw, you know, a possibility again. I think, you know, I conformed with, you know, thinking that, you know, I wasn't like, this was it, you know, it was just, you know, get go. And the crazy part, I asked my boss, what do I got to do to make more money? She said, go back to school, continue education. And, um, you know, we could talk about you getting a raise. And I'm like, I can't do that. I work already 60 to 80 hours a week. You know, I don't have the time. I don't have the money for it. So, you know, I was stuck in a rough place. And as they always say, you know, you join, you know, network marketing for inspiration and desperation. I was des definitely desperate. And, um, but I got inspired and I got inspired to change. And I saw, uh, uh, I started to dream again. And that was really, you know, that was good for me, was dreaming of the possibility of, you know, being able to be a homeowner you know, because I think I was just in survival mode, you know, for so many years, you know, that I stopped, you know, dreaming and, and thinking about all the possibilities of what's out there. And so, you know, that really just uh, sparked excitement and hope again. And it just like reinvigorated me and it just brought me back to life. It was like a, you know, reborn, re renewed mind and everything. And that that energy and excitement was really what drove me, you know, to, to do things that were outside of my comfort zone. And, you know, Pam has really dropped a lot of you know, great, you know, nuggets and mindset things. And, you know, she definitely took everything that I would probably speak on. And that's the beauty of, you know, having a, a, a circle of influence where you learn from people that, you know, that they say they look up to you. No, you know, I, I, I learned something from everybody I come across, you know, and, you know, building this business, you know, it's, it's an up and down, it's a roller coaster. you know, it's, you know, seasonal, you know, you got ups, you got downs, you got excitement, you got, you know, uh, stress and, you know, you got the frustration and they say, if you're not frustrated building this business, then you're not doing it right. You know, and my biggest thing is that everything that I've encountered, every struggle, every hardship that I've encountered in being an entrepreneur, you know, has definitely taught me a lesson. And, you know, whatever you're going through in your journey and in your season, you know, you just got to be calm and be still and know that this too shall pass. But what can you learn from it? You know, you got to be aware. What can I learn from this? What can I do different from this? You know, and that's one thing that that I always look at. You know, at first, you know, I, I get anxiety. I get stress. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? You know, and I'm an overthinker. I'm one of those people that look up everything and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I might have this. You know, I got a pain in my back. Oh, it might be this. It might be that. So I'm that person that's always was at a high, high anxiety level you know, um, always high paced. And, you know, it, it, it brought a lot of stress in my life. And, you know, I just learned how to just be calm now. You know, I started meditating. I started working out, you know, things that I thought I would never do, things that I would be so uncomfortable doing. You know, I was like, yo, how, how I'm going to look in, in a sauna with my eyes closed, taking deep breaths? Like, what are people going to think about me? Like, I don't know how to meditate. I think too much. I can't keep still. I, I can't shut my brain off. And then I realized, but that's the part of the process. It's learning how within that noise that you're experiencing in your brain to just focus back on your breath. So that's helped me so much. And everything, again, you know, with all these hardships, it, it prepared me to, to weather every storm that comes. So I always tell people, man, whatever you're going through, congratulations, because it's preparing you for the next level. Congratulations, because it's developing you to be the best leader that you can be, because how can you lead people to a place you've never been. So there's always something to learn in your struggle. So you're growing through your process, you're going through your process and embrace it, you know, and just enjoy it. And honestly speaking, laugh, you know, rule number one is have fun. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, you probably would have got asked me to be on this call two days ago. I would have been stressed out. I was bad, I was mad, I was angry. I wasn't in a great mood. And like she said, that every day is another opportunity to reset. Every minute, every hour, is another opportunity to reset. And that's what meditation has helped me learn is that no matter what's going through, cool, focus back on my breathing. And that helps me calm down and relax or focus on something that I can do, run to the gym, you know, go for a run. You know, I just literally, um, this Sunday, I, co I, I uh, completed a half marathon. Now, you know, she talked about going outside your comfort zone. That's something way outside my comfort zone. You know, two years ago, I couldn't even run for longer than 50 seconds. Like I couldn't do that, appreciate it, thank you. I couldn't run for 60 seconds, 50 seconds, 25 seconds. I was 270 pounds, my knees, my legs, they couldn't take that, 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 that pain. So I started with walking. 
And then I'll run as, I, as much as I could. I'll stop, walk again, run as much as I could, stop, walk again. And I started just doing that to the gym, two and a half miles. It would take me about 45 minutes to do that. Now two and a half miles I could do in 20 minutes because I kept doing it persistent. As much as I hated running, as much as it hurt my body, I just kept doing it. It was uncomfortable. Now it feels comfortable. That marathon was, the half marathon was, was crazy. And it, it's so many, you know, analogies to, to business and life because, you know, we're nervous, you know, we're, we're, we're going into something I've never experienced, never done. I never ran that much. So, and, and I went into that run with the injury at that and going into the run with this injury, I had sciatic pain, sciatica pain, you know, which was bothering me, you know, for the past like 10 days before the race. So I couldn't even race, you know, leading up to the race. So now I'm like, wow, you know, I can't prepare my body for the longest run that I'm about to do. I'm resting too much. This is probably going to make me feel heavier. So now the doubt starts creeping in, right? So I set a goal. I wanted to go and achieve that goal. And then now the doubt starts creeping in myself because now I have an obstacle on my way to my goal. And then I start calling some of my friends who love me and appreciate me and some of my business partners. And they're telling me, Jay, I love you, but I think, you know what? You shouldn't do this run. You might take something that's probably a temporary injury that you can make permanent injury. And now they start putting doubt in my head. And I'm like, wow, should I cancel this run? And, and, and it's like, should I even be telling people what I'm feeling and going through? Because two or three people kept telling me, Jay, you should not do this run. So now the, 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 the doubt and, 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 and the, the, the insecurity starts to creep in. I never did this. I'm overweight. I haven't been running. I got this injury, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm getting nervous. And then I, and I call another friend. And then that person's like, bro, why did you join, sign up for this race? And I said, honestly, one was to challenge myself. But the real thing is, what I, got, what, I want my kids to have a different memory of their father. You know, think back about what your memories are of your parents. You know, mine's were positive. Mine's were partying, drinking, drug, addiction, jail. I don't want my kids to have those thoughts of their parents. I want them, when they think about me, they are inspired, they're proud. My dad, yo, wakes up every morning, he was overweight. You know, my dad used to party a lot and now, you know, my dad is healthy. Now my dad works out every day. My, my dad did a half marathon. That's the reason why I did it. And I was listening to an audio and I sent it to you, Pam, and I hope you listen to it because in the audio he said, you know, a lot of us think about what we leave into our kids, right? A great man leaves an inheritance to his children. But it's not what you leave for them. It's what you leave in them. And that's what I want to do. I want to leave, leave something greater than materialistic. I want to leave them values, principles, disciplines, consistency, change, belief, hope, that they can do anything that they put their mind to. And that's why I started at that run. So when I thought about my why, it's like, no, nah, I got to do this run. Even if I got to walk, even if I got to crawl, even if I got to, I, I got to get into a wheelchair, I'm going to finish this run. 15,000 people at that race, 15,000 people had 15,000 stories, inspiring stories of why they're doing it. You know, and I didn't know this, but somebody sent me only 1% of the world has done a race like that. And they were like, congratulations, you're part of the 1%. I'm like, what? That's crazy. So to be able to do something like that, and on that journey, I crossed the finish line, the first five minutes, you see somebody throwing up quitting. I'm like, what? What the heck is going on? My anxiety starts creeping up. But I said, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to take my time. So I keep going. Four miles in, all right, my, my, my legs were feeling it. I got to walk a little bit. Catch my break. Take some water. I called my brother Marcos. Ran, ran a whole marathon. Get, ask him for some advice. What should I do? Uh, 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 uh. Asking him questions. You know, he's giving me some pointers. Cool, don't, be, don't, don't push it. It's all right. Walk. Walk again. You ain't got to do the 90-day run. It's okay. Walk. Drink some water. Take some time. Reset. Go back at it. Another four miles. Reset. Take some time. Drink some water. Then I start seeing 10 miles in. I got three miles to go. I see people falling to the sideline, crying, calling their parents. Oh, I can't do it no more. I'm done. I'm quitting. I see people falling over. I see people catching cramps. I see all this. And now I start getting the doubt in myself. Now it starts creeping in me. Wow, is 
that going to be me? Did I train hard enough? Did I do, do enough? You know, now I'm starting to get scared. Damn, am I really going to finish this? And I'm like, nah, I got to psych myself up. I got to be my biggest cheerleader. I got to be that person to push me because ain't nobody here pushing me. 15,000 people in this race, but it's you versus you. Start talking to myself, pushing myself. I'm doing this. And it was crazy. In the previous company, I was 200 people close to the top level of the company. I was 200 people close, but we were having so much momentum. We put in over 1,500 people in three months. Two people close, 200 people close to hitting the top level of the company. And guess what I did? Took my foot off the pedal. I said, oh, the momentum is going to take me to the top. I'm good. I took my foot off the pedal. And how you do anything is how you do everything. And now the last two, three miles of this race, I said, I'm not taking my foot off the pedal. That's when I even stepped it up and went harder. And went harder. And went harder. I was pacing with other people. I passed them. And I finished. And when I got to that finish line, my kids were there waiting for me, screaming, Daddy, Daddy. One of the best feelings in the world was accomplishing something that I said I was going to do. And it was just a run. But it was a run about life. It was a run challenging me. Finish what you started. It feels good. And it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit to go finish. And that's my prayer for you. I just want you to go finish what you started. You run your own race. You ain't gotta run as fast as everybody. I didn't run as fast as everybody. I ran my own race at my own time. Run your race. But you just gotta put one foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. That's all you gotta do. You know why? Because people are depending on you. You know why? Your why is looking at you. You know why? Because Pam pours into you guys every week. Josh pours into you guys every week. Because they believe in you. They didn't get paid for this. Half of you are not even on their team. They don't get paid for this. You know how amazing it will feel for them to see one of you guys walk the stage? To see one of you guys accomplish your goals and get that breakthrough? That's an amazing feeling. So with that being said, just keep working on yourself. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Make sure you're always plugged in. I truly love and appreciate each and every one of you guys. Again, I don't take this thing lightly. I thank you so much for having me here. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you guys. See you guys at Elevate. God bless you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Goodness gracious. God almighty. Man, I tell you one thing. Breakfast has been served. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much. Um, greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, um, please show Mr. J-A-O-N some love. And I'll tell you one thing, guys. We did not even talk about what he was going to talk about, but God is too intentional to be coincidental. Um, I am just super grateful, man. I am just at a loss for words. Thank you so much, Jay, for just sharing your heart, your passion, your story. And let's go finish, guys. Breakfast has been served. It is truly an honor, pleasure, and privilege to serve you guys. God bless you guys. And I read all of the comments. Uh, please show Jay Aon some love. And man, Jay, you just completely, completely blessed me as well. Um, always, brother. As much as you say, you learn from me. I learn from you. I'm inspired by you each and every single day. And I'm just so, so, so grateful to God for you and your heart and your leadership in every aspect of life. Because like you said, how you do anything is how you do everything. I love you so much also. And um, I have no doubt in my mind that you will be crown royale. You're going to finish this race because anything you set your mind to, you always do. Thank you so much for being who you are and who you are. Great day, everybody. Have an amazing day and have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys back on here next week. Take care.